Hey guys, Myasis here, and in this video we're going to look at really quickly polar coordinates. So this is a first of four polar coordinate BC calc videos. And if you want more videos, I have actually more extensive videos on polar coordinates and polar graphs where I do some more examples. And these are going to run pretty quick. So if you want to kind of have a more of a slower introduction and, and, and a slower uh, explanation of how to graph these guys, then uh, I would recommend going to my other videos on polar coordinates. And you can just go to my web, my YouTube site, my YouTube channel, and type in polar graphs or polar coordinates, and those should come up. All right, so here we're going to look at two things in this first video. We're going to look at how to plot points, and we're going to convert points from rectangular to polar and polar to rectangular. So when we talk about polar coordinate, we're really looking at, instead of having rectangular where you have X and Y, we're looking at circular, so we're looking at R and theta. So our points are always going to be in the form of R comma theta, where theta is the angle at which we're going to plot our point, and R is going to be how far away from the center or our radius on that circle. So if we're looking at the point 3 pi over 6, we're going to go, this is kind of weird, it's in terms of R and theta, but you're actually going to use theta first to know where you're going to go, and then you're going to go out that many units for R. So pi over 6 if you recall, pi over 6 is right about right here. So this one right here in this polar coordinate, this is pi over 6. So I'm going to go to the angle, pi over 6. And then on that angle there, um, on this line that's right here, I'm going to go out 3 units. So 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to draw my point there. And that is going to be point A. So let's look at, at B uh, for pi. And pi is going to be all the way over here, right? This is angle pi. Then I'm going to go out 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is going to be my B. Whenever I have a negative angle, I'm going to go down in the opposite direction. So instead of going clockwise, I'm, instead of going counterclockwise, I'm actually going to go clockwise. And that's going to be over to 5 pi over 6. So clockwise 5 pi over 6 is going to be over here. Now, Another way to think about this is in a unit circle situation, if you go over 5 pi over 6, so you go 5 pi over 6 this way, which is counterclockwise, you can just go straight down and whatever that axis, whatever that angle is, that's your negative angle. So the op basically opposite of the x-axis is going to be your negative angle. So this is right here. This is your negative angle. This is negative 5 pi over 6. And then we're going to go out three units like we did before. And so this right here is going to be our point C. Now, if we want, uh, if we have a negative radius, then what the negative radius does is it goes backwards. So we're going to go to 3 pi over 2 first. So 3 pi over 2, remember, is right here. Right, this is 3 pi over 2. And then instead of going out 2 units this way, we're going to actually go back 2 units this way. And this will be our point D. All right, so that's how we graph polar points in a polar coordinate system. Now what if we want to convert, we want to convert from rectangular to polar form. So we have polar, you know, we have a rectangular coordinate and we want polar coordinates. And notice, remember, that there are really four ways to write any single point. We can have um, two positive values, an r and a theta, or we can have a negative r and a positive theta. That would still take us to the same point. Um, we can go around the circle and then go negative r and uh, we can also have two negatives. So we really need to be specific on what our values are either going to be positive or negative, and if theta values are going to be positive or negative, so that we know what specific point we're looking at. So uh, we have our rectangular point, negative 1 and root 3. And what we're going to do here is we are going to use, basically, we're going to go and convert this to polar um, by looking for r and theta. Now, R and theta can be found using the following formulas. Uh, X equals R cosine theta, and Y equals R sine theta. All right, so we can use these as our conversion factors. So uh, we could do that, or we can just kind of think, well, where is this point? And that point, negative 1 root 3, this is actually, it's kind of easier if you just think about where this point is relative to a unit circle. Um, because we know root 3 is on a unit circle. If we divided each of these by 2, we would be really thinking about the point negative 1 half and root 3 over 2. Now, negative 1 and root 3 is really just further away 
on that circle. So it's, it's actually got a radius that's a little bit longer. So negative 1 half root 3 over 2, it's going to be right here. And we know that, that angle to be 2 pi over 3, right? So we know that angle to be 2 pi over 3. Uh, the radius, well, we know it was one, negative 1 half negative root 3 over 2 would be our unit circle. If we multiply that by 2, we would get rid of those 2s, right? So instead of a unit circle, we'd have actually a radius of 2. So if you just think about the, that, that way, it would work. If you wanted to, you can also plug it into x, this uh, x equation here and kind of figure out what r is there. Um, or use the Pythagorean theorem would also work to find r because we're talking about an x and a y coordinate, right? And uh, our r is our radius. So we can also think about r squared to be x squared plus y squared in this case. Any, in any way, we're going to get 2. So our radius here is going to be 2. So if our both values are positive, then we're going to have a point 2 comma 2 pi over 3. Now if we want our angle to be negative but our r to be positive, we're talking about going all the way around this way. So what you could do is you could go to this angle here and then go and reflect, right, and go backwards. So R is still going to be 2. We're going to go out 2, but this time we're going to go backwards all the way here, and that's going to be negative 4 pi over 3. Because, again, this right here is 4 pi over 3, and then we're going to reflect. Okay, if we want our R to be negative but our theta to be positive, then we actually are looking at this angle. I'm sorry. We're going to want our theta to be positive. But we need to be on this line right here. I'm going to go and change this color so we can see what we're doing here. Um, we want to be on this line here. So that way we can go backwards. We can go backwards a negative 2 radius, right? So what is that angle positively? This going all the way like that. That's going to be 5 pi over 3. All right, now what if we want both to be negative? So we still want to reach there, but now we're going to go down this way. So we got negative 2 and negative pi over 3. All right, and so that's how we would convert from rectangular to polar, kind of just looking about what the unit circle is doing. You could also use these if you really needed to, but it's probably better for you to know just, you know, basically what's going on in the unit circle. Um, so the idea here, and I already kind of mentioned this just a second ago, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and x is equal to r cosine theta y is equal to r sine theta, and tangent theta is going to be y over x. Right? And we kind of know that from just some basic trigonometry. So if I wanted to change a polar point into rectangular, we've got a, an r of 2 here and a theta of pi. So I'm going to go ahead and use x equals r cosine theta. I'm sorry, this, this is what you would want to convert if you're going rectangular to polar. And this is what you're going to want to use if you're going polar to rectangular. Okay, so we're going to have x equals 2 cosine pi, which is negative 2. And you have y equals 2 sine of pi, which is 0. So your point's negative 2 comma 0. All right. Now, in this case, we have negative 3, ne positive 3. Now, negative 3, positive 3 doesn't really give us, um, you know, we want to change the point negative 3 to polar form. So this is rectangular. Now, notice that negative 3, positive 3 would really be like negative 1, positive 1, right? So we're looking at going um, negative 3, positive 3. So... So we're going to do this. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared equals r squared. r turns out to be 2 root 3 when all is said and done. And now I know that the tangent of theta is equal to negative 3 over 3. Sorry, y over x, y over x. Either way, it's going to be negative 1. So where is the tangent negative 1? Now, what quadrant is this in? This is negative 3, 
3. Negative 3, 3 is in the second quadrant, right? So we're actually talking about the second quadrant. So we're over here. And we have the point negative 3, 3. Where, where in the second quadrant is the tangent of theta equal to negative 1? Well, the only place it is, is at 3 pi over 4. So theta in this case is 3 pi over 4. So this one you got to kind of think about what's going on in which quadrant we're in and what is that angle in that quadrant, right? All right, so that's how we do conversions for polar coordinates from points. So on the next video, I'll talk about conversions for equations. We'll see you later, guys. Bye.